Alrighty guys, welcome back to another Project Zomboid video. Today we'll be covering 10 more tips that you probably can't live without. They aren't ordered in any way, but these little tidbits of information might just save your life. And if you enjoy what you see, be sure to check out some other videos on the channel. Anyways, let's get started. If you have ever found yourself locked, let's say out of a police armory, and don't have the tools necessary to enter, whether that's an axe, or hammer and screwdriver, there is another way to enter locked homes, and that's to simply spawn in the key. To do this, all you need to do is lead zombies into the building of choice and simply kill them inside. By doing this, there's a chance that the house key will spawn on the dead zombie, giving you access to the entire building. This is especially useful for garage doors, police stations, and the prison. The next one is pretty helpful in the late game, and that's the fact that you can actually grow crops indoors. This is especially useful during the winter, when cold temperatures can hurt and eventually destroy your crops. All you need is a bag of dirt and a shovel to transplant the dirt and start your very own farm indoors. You don't need lights for it to grow either, though it will grow at a slower rate, and you will have to be more proactive when it comes to watering the plants, as there is no natural rainfall. This one is for all the careful drivers out there, and that's the fact that there is a built-in cruise control mechanic for the driving system on Zomboid. So if you want to keep a good pace that isn't too fast or slow on the highway, or to give one less thing to manage on those long road trips, this is the way to go. To initiate cruise control, you just need to hold shift and press W. Each keystroke will add on 5 extra miles an hour, and all you need to do to disengage out of it is to brake or hold the S gate. I recommend this one if you find yourself going a little bit too fast and hitting things often, because it is good to keep a normal pace. Speaking about saving lives, this tip can really come in clutch, and it's the fact that you can actually disinfect bandages or ripped sheets instead of requiring bourbon or disinfect it normally. All you need to do is find a cooking pot and fill it with some water, heat it up in an oven or a fire, and just disinfect the rags from there. This is very important as wounded infection can spell the end for your character, so having a way to disable and prevent infections is definitely needed if you find yourself more injury prone, and it is a very cheap recipe to follow. This little fact here is often slept on, as it seems like another junk item, but it has an actual nice use for sure, especially for those stealth ninjas out there. And that is the use of both the headphones and earbuds in-game. Normally, if you listen to a radio or television, some of that sound will leak out, so there's always a risk of attracting unneeded attention. But you can actually connect your headphones or earbuds to them and reduce the sound altogether. Having a set of earbuds nearby is especially great if you carry around a radio to keep up with the weather, and it's nice to know that you aren't putting yourself in any more danger than you need to. Stealth is an important factor in survival, but there will be a time that it simply isn't the option, or you find yourself neck deep in the undead. Losing them might seem like a daunting task, but one thing to keep in mind is that zombies are very obstacle prone. Basically, what this means is that they can get easily distracted on things such as windows and doors. So the next time you're being chased down by the undead, try and lead them over walls with a lot of windows and doors. This should distract a few and help aid you on your escape. It's useful to go around the entire perimeter of a home when you want to ditch the undead in residential neighborhoods as well, as it both blocks line of sight and gets them distracted on other things. Keeping an eye on your sleep and tired moodles can mean the difference between life and death. While there are no threats to your character, such as sleep deprivation, the moodlet itself brings some debilitating consequences. For one, your strength and awareness range are impacted severely, which can make a single zombie into a massive threat because of how weak your character hits for. So keep an eye on your sleeping habits, because it does affect a lot for the game, and how it plays out. Cars are usually the safe bet when it comes to traversing the streets, but did you know that you can actually go on the initiative with cars as well? If you roll down the car window your character is in, you can shoot and you even use melee weapons from your car. With this, you can shoot zombies all around town with a shotgun right out of the comfort of your window, especially without the downsides of just doing it on foot. This is especially useful for when you want to roll up, clear out hordes, and get out of the area as a car is your best armor, as you can always roll up the window and power your way out. Another small detail some people might not notice is clothing and some of the effects it can have on your character. While protection values are obvious, 
There are also some pieces of clothing that affect run and combat speed either adversely or positively. An example would be sneakers boosting your run speed by 1.1 and boots lowering your run speed by 15%. Though heavier boots do deal more damage to the undead. Anyways, it's good to look at these values and what you're actually wearing as they can really change up your character's dynamic when you least expect it. Lastly, we're going to be covering a tip that you might not exactly know when you're starting to dip your toes into the later stages of the game, and that has to deal with the generators. After the power goes out in the world, generators help keep the electricity going in your home using gasoline as fuel. It powers a 20 tile range, two floors up and two floors down where it's placed. This is great for keeping freezers going when food preservation is a must as well. Though the more devices you do have running, such as ovens, freezers and microwaves, they do add on more energy drain a day. Placing them indoors is also an easy way to gas yourself as well. And one last thing is that when generators drop below 50% condition, they do have a chance to explode. So make sure to keep up with the maintenance above 50 with electronic scrap. Anyways, that's it for a tips and tricks video for today. I hope you all have learned something nice and hopefully you've learned something new. And if you did, it'd be awesome if you show up by subscribing and liking the video. I also have a Twitch Discord and Twitter if you want to check that out as well. Anyways, see you all in the next episode. Peace out.